Before I get into that, I do want to say that there is a lot of really impressive stuff here at the show. Ultimately, you know, I, frankly, the OEMs have done a great job of putting not just a lot of innovation and passion into the vehicles, but putting them on the road. There are respectable volumes of zero emission vehicles, battery electric ones in particular, on the road now, and I applaud all the efforts to go and scale as we look forward, whether that's in vehicles or charging, to make Europe transportation zero emission. Now, we want to be part of this. Why we're here and why we're interested in Europe is that we want to help leverage the experience we have, not just with our North American pilot fleet, but also with EVs overall, in order to help accelerate that transition to sustainable energy. Now, let's talk about the product a little bit. We understand that the European market is not a monolith. We understand that countries are different, customers are different, and we look forward to developing trucks that will be very specific for the use cases of our customers' needs. Now, what you have to know is that we designed the Semi from day one to be a compelling product across multiple markets, including Europe. Now, the truck that you see at the booth today is just one variant. We adopted our pilot production North American truck for the European market and roads. You know, thanks to the 2020 rules, uh, the dimensions and weights directive modifications, the Tesla Semi will be street legal in Europe and be compatible with European trailers. Now, we'll be back and we'll bring some other things along that I think will uh, showcase a little bit more of the variants that we're looking to develop to help best serve a wide variety of customers in Europe. But we're proud of what we have today. And what we do come back, we want to make sure we do so in scale. And ultimately, we want to address the concerns of our customers. Two of the things that you commonly hear about when it comes to electrification are that range is not acceptable and that the trucks are way too heavy. Now, we've been putting a lot of effort in to show that those two things are not necessarily correct, or at least our product helps address those concerns. Our 800 kilometer truck, we have done actual demonstrations of. And these masses, we think, are competitive and allow for a significant amount of payload. And when you couple the two together, we believe that we can address a large number of applications that diesel is successfully doing today, but we can do it at a lower operating cost. Now, how do you achieve this? It's through developing a single, optimized, simple platform around battery electric from day one. Trying to protect or optimize for multiple powertrain options just introduces drag, and all these numbers are more difficult to achieve. So we encourage everyone to continue to develop purpose-built EV platforms to allow for the best possible products. Now, these numbers, particularly the mass ones, represent today, but we have, we have more improvements, and there's no exemptions factored in here, no weight exemptions. And on top of that, uh, we think that there are additional levers to pull to reduce these masses even further. Now, the other common refrain that we get from our customers is about charging, and the charge times are too long. We have successfully demonstrated and deployed megawatt level charging in the field. It is safe, it is reliable, and it enables a one-for-one -one replacement of diesel trucks. We've successfully driven, PepsiCo did a demonstration last year, of more than 1,700 kilometers in a single 24-hour period, and that is enabled by fast charging. This allows the vehicle to get back on the road as quickly as can and go back to earning money for the customer. Now, it's important to understand what we're really trying to do is ensure that the vehicle has no dedicated time for charging. What we want to do is take time where the vehicle would already be stationary, be it for unloading and loading cargo, or when a driver needs to take their break or they're off duty, that is when we want to charge the vehicle. The goal is zero dedicated stops for charging. Fast charging also enables positive economics, and we are seeing lower operating costs in the trucks that we put in the field today. Now, how do we put this charging to use? To date, we have driven more than 7.5 million kilometers with the pilot Tesla Semi fleet. Now, this is not the most number of miles by a heavy duty fleet. Again, I applaud all the work the other guys are doing. They're doing great work. But why are we proud of this number? It's because we've done it with a relatively small number of trucks in a relatively short period of time. And it's because of high efficiency and high range and megawatt charging that that is possible. Just as a data point, we have a truck in our fleet that is less than a year and a half into operations. It has driven more than 400,000 kilometers. Those are not simulated, those are not accelerated, those are real world miles. 
And those have been all done at North American gross vehicle weight limits to enable 15 million ton kilometers of work. Now, Tesla wants to put its money where its mouth is, and we put these trucks today into our existing operations. We haul battery packs out of our factory in Nevada to support vehicle operations down in California. And we do this one for one with diesel. There's no compromise in schedule and no compromise in payload in order to make this happen. So we get to replace diesel at a lower operating cost. Now, in addition to having this, we have to make sure the vehicle is actually capable to do that job. And we put them to work. We go up some serious grades. About two years ago, we did a demonstration where we took our drive, where we uh, took the truck out for an 800 kilometer drive with no charging, successfully demonstrated it. As part of that, we did this pass, it's called Tejon Pass, more commonly known as the Grapevine, and it's significant. But we know that European has its fair share, the European market has its fair share of grades as well. And Brenner, which we plan to demonstrate at some point, you know, is definitely notable. Why are we confident that the semi is going to work in these applications as well as others? Because this is the grade that we do every day, multiple times a day. This is Donner Pass in California. It's a great proving ground. You've got different traffic types, different weather conditions, different grade pitches along the way. It's a grueling, wonderful Goldilocks route where we get to really stress the truck in a variety of applications. We're confident that the work that we are doing in North America is applicable to the strenuous areas of Europe. We take our truck and we climb heavy grades in high heat, 45C, down and out, outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. We go to Alaska, we climb high grades in minus 20C. We go park the truck and let it sit out in minus 40C. We are doing this work and we understand that Europe is not constant and there will be unique challenges to the market. But I want to reassure you that we are stressing the vehicle and the systems so we're confident when we do come here, it will get the work done for the customer. Now, electrification introduces a major improvement in terms of efficiency. The baseline you know, diesels over time have actually significantly improved in terms of efficiency. There has been market improvement and that should be applauded, but electrification introduces a step change here. And the common industry numbers that we see are starting to approach 100 kilowatt hours of energy in order to travel 100 kilometers. We are actively using the semi and demonstrating that it is capable of 100 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And when we come back with a high volume version of this truck, this number is going to continue to improve. Efficiency is key. It results in lower battery mass, lower battery cost, and thus enabling better economics for the customer to reduce pricing and increase capability. Now, we put all of that efficiency into the field, and we put the semi across a variety of different duty cycles, whether that's light or medium or heavy. And now this is, this is actual data from our North American fleet. So you'll see the numbers tend to correspond to North American limits, but it is very much applicable to how we expect vehicles to run under a wide variety of applications that our customers are gonna put the semi in in the future. And again, as we get more efficient, these numbers will continue to improve. Now, it's one thing to deliver a very capable semi, a very capable heavy truck, but it has to be reliable. It's got to stay on the road. And thus far, the fleet, the semi-pilot fleet that is in operation, is currently showing more than 95% uptime. We use Tesla's vertical integration, starting all the way up with the design teams and working through manufacturing and supply chain, production, and down to service to create a product that not only is reliable, but also one that allows us to get the vehicle back to the customer faster. We understand that time is of the essence. We can't take a truck down for an elongated repair job. And by the way, that 95% number includes both unscheduled and scheduled maintenance, as does the fact that our key to key time, the amount of hours that it takes to take a truck, repair it and get it back, is less than 24 hours in nearly 70% of the cases in the current fleet. And this is what we are looking to continue to improve to ensure that our customers can get their vehicles back on the road and back to work. Now, as we look to come to the European market, we'll make sure that our customers have the service partnership that they need. Whether that is something that Tesla does directly, we work with third-party services, or something where a technician that works at 
a customer's site you know, is equipped in order to work on the semi directly. You know, we see the diverse service needs, and the European market is incredibly nuanced. We really respect that. And the number of solutions that are out there are tremendous. And we want to fit into those solutions so that the customer has the best tool to do the job. Now, we have shown that electrification is technologically ready. But how do we bring this to scale? What do we need to do? Well, Tesla is delivering additional trucks to PepsiCo, our launch partner, throughout this year. But then we're actually starting to introduce, through the end of this year, additional new customers that are going to get a chance in North America to experience a semi firsthand in a full ownership experience. But that's just this year. What we're really looking forward to is high volume. Now, we are constructing a factory outside of Rio, Nevada, near one of our existing plants, that will be capable of building more than 50,000 units a year. We look forward to scaling production throughout 2026, and we see that Europe is the next market following the ramp in North America. Now, what does this scale do? What this scale does is allows us to industrialize and bring capacity to semi that lowers our cost, that we can pass on to our customers, so that when they make an investment, when they buy a semi, they can pay that back substantially faster than a traditional fleet turnover time. The end result is a positive economic experience for our customers. We aim to be as competitive at an upfront price with diesel as possible in order to accelerate the adoption of electric trucks as quickly as we can. Again, this is unlocked through Tesla's deep vertical integration. And we plan to leverage this into multiple variants. Again, you're seeing one today. We'll be taking on a wide variety of applications and vehicle types. Now, it's one thing to scale a vehicle. It's an entirely other thing. We also have to scale the charging infrastructure. Now, we're going to make sure that the customers have the charging solution that they need. That could be a depot charging, which we have experience with, deploying with PepsiCo in our own operations, for example. Or it could be something more akin to the public supercharger network that you might be familiar with. We're going to make sure that the customer has what they need to do the job. And that means we'll also ensure that there's compatibility with the other third-party networks and public networks that are coming online in Europe. We want to make sure our customers have the tools they need to do the job at the time, and that includes interoperability with other charging networks. But we are using our experience at deploying more than 50,000 DC chargers worldwide to drive down the cost of deployment and equipment to ensure the lowest possible charging cost for our customers. Now, this is just one piece of it. Ultimately, we need a lot of partners along the way in order to make this happen. So I call on the charging providers to continue to scale. I call on the policymakers, please work with us, work with the other charging providers to reduce the burden, to reduce the effort and costs in order to put charging into the ground. I call on the other OEMs to continue to make very compelling EV vehicles that allow for mass adoption quickly. We are really excited to bring the semi to Europe. We think that it can blend low cost, high capability, and long range into a unique product that addresses a wide variety of needs and applications within the European market. And we are excited to come along with everybody else here in moving towards a zero emission future and accelerating the world to sustainable energy and transportation. The future is electric. Thank you very much.